In this video, I share with you a very valuable resource. It is a document that will walk you through how to create a website, whether you're doing it by yourself or you're working with a website designer. This is sort of a master document that helps you to organize, plan the content and the steps to, to doing it. I wish I had this document when I was first creating my website. And now, whenever I revamp my website, you know, once every one to three years, I come back to this document and I follow the steps myself. So I hope that this document will save you a lot of time and money. This is a combination of my seven years of experience with online marketing, advising hundreds of clients on these kinds of issues. So let's get going. When you come into this document, you want to click File here and then click Make a Copy and that will allow you to make a private uh, copy for your own use. Now the first section of this document is a timeline. The timeline is basically a step-by-step -step sort of walking you through how to create or revamp your website, okay? Um, if you do well with due dates uh, and deadlines, then, then please do uh, fill out the dates wherever you see these lines. So for example, by, you know, August 1st, I will do a template uh, document, or I will walk through this template and do a quick draft of it myself. By, you know, September 1st, I will have conducted blah, blah, blah. So um, if you don't do well with due dates and deadlines, you can still use the timeline as a step-by-step -step way to really use this document. Okay, so let me show you a few quick things you will see blue underlined um, hyperlinks in this document. And whenever you see it, you can click on this and then click on the link underneath the blue underline um, to see what the additional resource is. So for example, here I give you a, a blog post about how to conduct a website user interview. What is that? That's basically getting outside of your own head into the mindset of your audience to think about your whole website for, from their perspective, not just from your own perspective. Because guess who the website, guess who your website is for? Your website is not for your own, oh, I'm so proud of this and I love my website so much. Uh, if you are just doing a hobby, that's fine. But if you're running a business, you're creating a business and you're trying to reach people, then your website really should be speaking to your ideal audience, which is why I really begin with doing a couple of website user interviews, not on your own website if you don't have one yet, but just talking with others that would be your, your part of your ideal client type of person and seeing what they think of other websites and kind of getting their mindset about it, okay? Now, uh, the step three is to choose a theme from one of these website building platforms, Weebly, Wix, Squarespace, or Yola. Really, you probably should just choose one of, well, you probably should just choose the one that I recommend the most often, which is Weebly. I have been using Weebly for my own websites, and my many of my clients have used this for theirs, for seven years. They have been so reliable, it's so simple to use, far less problems than using WordPress. Yes, I know that WordPress is the gold standard for website software, but and I have seriously, as you can imagine, I've seriously considered it myself several times. Some of my peers use WordPress. Many of my peers use WordPress. I started with Weebly, and after considering WordPress again and again, I have stayed with Weebly. So that should say something to you. Weebly, again, is so simple to use. It never gives me problems, just about, almost never, um, truly. I, I could pretty much say it never gives me problems. It's so reliable and it never has incompatible plugins and viruses that WordPress constantly has and you, know, you always have to do updates and maintenance on WordPress websites. It just keep it simple. I have built a full-time business with Weebly and uh, again, uh, I've, with my Weebly website, you know, one year I made $370,000 that year. Uh, it, it's fine. It really is fine. So I really encourage you to, to highly consider it. Um, so anyway, I'm going to have you read through this template uh, timeline yourself. Uh, it should be pretty self-explanatory. If you have any questions about any of this timeline stuff, please do comment on this video and ask me your question. Let me know specifically what you're confused about and uh, I'll do my best to answer it. Like, remember, again, you can uh, click on any of these links and then click on these links to get to the resources that I've listed here. But let me actually walk you through 
um, parts of this document that I think are particularly important. The, most of this document is written in a way that I think you should be able to understand and use, but the, I'll just kind of walk you through it briefly. Again, uh, the first thing to do in this document when you're, when you're doing your own draft is to focus again on your ideal audience. This web, your website is not just for your own pride and happiness. Yes, your website should not disgust you, but most importantly, your website is for your audience, so you should create your website from their perspective rather than just from yours. And I would say mostly from their perspective. That's why really here in the first part of the document, I ask you to think about the, the website from their mindset. Okay. Now, uh, important thing is in, in this in this document, I don't give you a lot of space uh, underneath each section, but you can please feel free to write as much as you want. You know, I'm just, I just didn't give a lot of space just because I wanted to keep the document relatively um, concise. But you know, you can create as much space as you want. Now, the next section is to do your overall vision for your website. Now, in this section, I, I have two subsections, the minimum published version of your website, as well as your final version. Now, why do I separate these two? Well, it's because creating a website is an, a, a, um, one of the greatest dangers and temptations is perfectionism. You're going to think, well, I want my website to look like so-and-so's website. I want it to do this. I want it to have all these different sections. And what's going to happen if you go with your perfectionistic vision is it will take you a long time and many, many thousands of dollars possibly to create your website. I will tell you to let me please be one to encourage you to please publish and announce a minimum version first. And then over time, you can add on to your website, make it better as you continue to grow your business instead of starting with an amazing website. I have, before I was a business coach, I uh, was in a company that sold website development services. That's what we did. And we sold clients on websites that were tens of thousands of dollars, many clients like this. And I will tell you that many, many people, not just the clients in my previous company, but just these past seven years of being a business coach, I have seen so many people spend thousands or tens of thousands on their websites, and it has very little correlation to how many sales they get on their website afterwards. Uh, it's really about the business, uh, the, the, the market, the marketability of the product or service. It has more to do with how many sales, how much sales you get, not how well the website is designed and how full feature it is and everything. So please spend the least amount of money you can, the, less, the least amount of time you can to create, publish, and announce your first version of your website. And then over the years, over the months and the years, as you work more with clients and with your ideal audience, you can then add on to your website to make it better and better. I will tell you, after seven years of earning a full-time income in my business, I still have my minimum published version of my website. Now, of course, seven years later, my minimum published version is probably better than most people's minimum published versions because I'm, I'm a marketing coach, number one, and I've been doing this for seven years. Your first minimum published version will be so simple, and, and, but it's just doable. So for example, I've given you a couple of, if you just launch your website with four web pages, that's enough to get you started. It's more important to focus on the marketability of your services and products in terms of making money than making your website great. Okay, I have seen many websites that are so simple but are so incredibly profitable and you wouldn't know it because you can't, you don't know how profitable a, a business is from their website. Some websites look so bad but they're making millions of dollars and other websites look amazing and they're making almost nothing. So start with a minimum budget version, announce that, publish it, announce it, share it, and then build it over time with more feedback as you get in real time from your audience. All right, um, uh, tagline's important because you want your website, when people come to it, to immediately know what, why they're, whether they are in the right place. And so your tagline's very important. Um, okay, copywriting tip. Now, writing your website may feel daunting to you sometimes, but I want to give you a tip, which is try, write, try writing as if you're writing an email. So you can actually try this. Open up your email software and start a new message to 
uh, an ideal client of yours, somebody who you love working with. Um, if you don't have any clients yet, imagine who your ideal client would be. And then just start writing your website. Uh, your, start writing an email as if for them. Describe um, how much you care about their, their growth. Uh, describe um, what you believe their, their dreams are, what you believe the problems that they are frustrated and wish to solve are through your services. Um, you know, describe your story and the, the thing, parts of your story that you believe are relevant for them. So just like write an email, okay? And then, and then, you know, don't send the email to anybody. You don't have to. Just save the draft and then sleep on it. And then the next day, come back and edit the email. And then that's basically can be the beginnings of your website copy. Maybe that is your website copy. This email writing tip uh, is not is not just for websites. People have written entire books on this. Have you ever heard of the Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss, one of the best-selling business books of all time? And that was basically he had written the book first. The first version of the book he had just written it as if he was writing a book, and then he read it and he really didn't like it, and he just threw that copy away. And then next, what he did was he he wrote an email like to a to one of his ideal audience members just to just writing an email sharing all of his tips and life advice business advice and he uh and then he also had a series of conversations with other people answering their questions and then he put that together into the four-hour work week best-selling book for years and years and years right so that's this tip is useful for a lot of different things okay um so so let's see mission and values hopefully this is pretty clear from what i've written here uh, the relevant parts of your story. Now, don't spill your entire life story on your website. It's about what parts of the story are going to resonate with your ideal audience in terms of what parts of it they care about in terms of when they're thinking about you and your services or your products, what parts of your story matter to them. Okay, so um, you can, of course, click on my own uh, you can go go through and look at uh, look at how I write my own uh, about page for for some inspiration. Okay, so your services page, of course, is really important. Describe what you what you sell, and here I give you a blog post I wrote that walks you through how to write a sales page or basically your services page that you where you describe what what services and programs that you sell. And uh, you can basically just walk through this blog post that gives you, you know, what sections of the website or the, the sales page or services page, etc. So just, you know, walk through this uh, and write your own sales page. And then you can, of course, see mine and how I write mine as well. Um, actually, this, uh, this particular link goes to my services page, which is, is really just a, um, a directory to my, to my full, uh, you know, so this is really my sales page is my one-on-one -on -one coaching page right here, okay? Um, your resources page uh, is basically where you list some things that you think your ideal audience would find helpful. Your contact page, how to contact you. Um, I basically have a Google Voice number. Google Voice is a free resource at this time, free tool at this time. Great for just making a new number, a new phone number, a new voicemail box. Uh, whenever you get a voicemail there, it, it will, you'll automatically be emailed about it. It's very uh, convenient. And uh, let's see, your, your home page. Okay, I've given you some tips here. This is basically a Google search uh, that I found helpful. Um, I did actually find some of these articles helpful, so I, I gave you the, the link to that right there. All right, your blog. Um, okay, so the self-explanatory there. Your credibility indicators, this is a part of, this is not actually going to be literally on your website, but if you do this exercise that's in this blog post here, uh, it will be helpful to, it will be helpful to, for you to add to various parts of your website. So that's why this resource is there. Okay, your ideal website visitor journey. What do I mean by that? I want you to imagine the ideal audience or ideal client member who is discovering you and finding your website. What do you want? What do you imagine that they do when they come to your homepage? What do you want them to experience on your homepage? What do you want them to understand very quickly? And then what do you want them to do next from your homepage? Okay, so um, I'll just give you an example. On my homepage, they immediately become clear about my energy. I want to come across as generous, warm, spiritual, resourceful, uh, even humble. Um, and then I want them to understand immediately who my help 
and then I want them to um, to to immediately go th and, and click through to my content to read my articles uh, even before they join my email list I want them to read my articles because I want them to benefit as soon as possible and then uh, there's also a search that they'll find on my homepage that they can search to find to find articles they're interested in uh, they'll see my services uh, so etc so kind of think through that the journey that your ideal uh, visitor takes on your own website okay the look and feel um, so uh, you know things like your logo I don't even have a logo by the way so for, for your minimum published version seven years into running a full-time business I still don't have a logo so if you don't want to worry about it you really really don't have to okay but for those of you who really care about that then you know it's basically some kind of symbol that represents your overall brand uh, by the way there is a um, a resource that you might find useful wordmark.it okay if you go there uh, this is a a website that gives you all kinds of font types so if a, a simple logo could simply be your name if you're creating a website based on your name okay so if I type in my name George Cow and I press enter on the keyboard it will start loading uh, dozens of font types isn't this cool and it'll tell you what what font uh, type it is and you can basically Google that font type and maybe you have to buy the font um, buy the font type uh, or or you can basically you know if you're, ha if you're happy enough with this you can zoom in uh, by doing command plus or control plus on your keyboard you can zoom in on this and you can literally just do a screenshot and keep that as your logo you know it's not the most professional thing to have a white background necessarily but or you can work with a logo designer and tell them what font type you want based on what you what you find from this website okay all right um, graphics whenever you're putting graphics on your site be sure to reduce the file size so that your web page loads faster and this wonderful tool compressor.io uh, will it's a free tool at this time to allow you to easily reduce the file size of your graphics and uh, right now it's not loading for some strange reason typically it loads just fine uh, I'm not I'll let you go and look at it yourself I also have a link here if you want to do a Google search for other tools to reduce file size okay uh, I'm gonna keep going here another interesting resource 23 lessons from eye tracking studies be sure to take a look at that if you'd like Okay, tip, make your web pages easy to read with less width per line. All right, so one of my clients, uh, he had a website that was really just long and like, you know, the font kept, the, the, the text kept going on and on and on and it was kind of hard to read in my opinion, I think for most people. Now I told him to make it sh more width, uh, shorter, uh, narrow, more narrow and now it's easier to read. So you can actually see the latest version of his website there. Uh, I also really recommend that you look at medium.com medium.com um, is a wonderful a wonderful website that if you look at how their articles are formatted narrow width relatively large font size they they really know how to format uh, articles and web pages to make it look easy to read so be sure to look at medium.com as well another resource medium.com okay um, all right Calls to action, wireframe. Okay, very dangerous section here. A wireframe is basically, um, the reason why I say it's dangerous and I'm still talking about it is because I feel like I'd be irresponsible if I didn't tell you about wireframes. Most website designers work with wireframes. I actually really don't even, I, I don't, really don't love it because it, it, it makes you really perfectionistic. Oh, I want my website to look like this or look like that. So I had wireframes for my, for my website and I said, oh, I want it to look like this, look at that. But then I couldn't make it look that way in Weebly. So I got frustrated until I kind of really let it go and say, you know what, I'm just going to work with what I could in Weebly. And I ended up being happy with this. So I really recommend ignoring wireframes and going with whatever themes you can get from Weebly or Wix or whatever it is. Okay. Um, navigation is basically, uh, you know, at the top, there's always, often there's a menu. This is a navigation menu, and these are sub-navigation when you have these kinds of things here. Okay, I'm running out of time on this video, but uh, footer is basically at the very bottom of your site. There is a footer. Oh, one more thing I want to say before I go is what does above the fold mean? Above the fold means that when people load your website, okay, um, I'm going to shrink this a little bit. When people load your website, 
what they see before they scroll down is called above the fold. So this would be above the fold, and the scrolling down would be below the fold. So that's all for now. You can use the rest of this document to, um, you know, should be self-explanatory. And I wish you the best in designing your website or revamping your website. And any questions you have, comment on this video.